Phytochemicals and antioxidants are another thing that we want to maximize. And, and the most phytochemical and antioxidant rich foods are whole plant foods and um, uh, sprouts, which are even higher, fermented foods and, and teas like green teas and herbal teas. Uh, we get a lot of protection from phytochemicals and antioxidants and they can protect us against disease and enhance dietary treatment. And they do this by reducing oxidative stress and inflammation, enhancing gut microbiota, improving fasting glucose and insulin sensitivity, supporting immune function and protecting against DNA damage. And to maximize intake, we want to go for variety. The wider the range of plant foods in the diet, the greater the variety and content of phytochemicals and antioxidants. We want to go for color. The richest sources are often the most colorful. To maximize protective phytochemicals, uh, and antioxidants, we might want to choose purple instead of white onions or black instead of or red uh, instead of brown rice, dark instead of uh, light greens. We want to choose foods from the entire rainbow. So I would say in terms of fruits and vegetables, go for at least three green, two orange, yellow, two pink, red, one purple, blue, one white, beige every single day. One of the things I love to do with salads is to try to put something that gets every um, uh, color on the rainbow in the salad. Pile on the herbs and spices, gram for gram, they are very potent, uh, maybe the most potent sources of antioxidants in the diet and phytochemicals. Eat more raw foods. Raw foods contain enzymes that, uh, some raw foods contain enzymes that convert phytochemicals into their active form. Uh, for example, we have myrosinase and cruciferous vegetables that helps to convert glucosinolates into isothiocyanates like sulforaphane, which is a potent detoxifier in the body. It, it kicks phase two enzymes into gear to help get rid of, of potentially damaging uh, uh, chemicals. Alanase in allium vegetables help to, helps to convert alan to allicin. And we can start sprouting. The phytochemical army po poised to protect the delicate new plant multiplies when we sprout uh, by five to 50 times. And we can drink antioxidant rich teas like turmeric tea or hibiscus tea or ginger tea or matcha tea. And of course, eat whole plant foods, minimize whole uh, highly processed foods. Goal number four is to minimize pathogenic dietary components like new 5GC, TMAO, endotoxins, environmental contaminants, and the products of high temperature cooking. New 5GC is, is a sialic acid sugar uh, molecule not produced by humans, but it's very common in red meat. Human tissues contain new 5GC only if animal products are ingested. And new 5GC is a very pro-inflammatory molecule that's associated with an increased risk of chronic disease. Next is TMAO and its precursors. TMAO is trimethylamine and oxide which is a compound present in some fish, or it's formed from carnitine or choline by gut bacteria. And the main sources are animal products, uh, such as meat and dairy products. TMAO concentrations are positively associated with inflammation, endothelial dysfunction, type two diabetes, uh, central uh, uh, adipos uh, adiposity, hypertension, and cardiovascular disease. Uh, endotoxins are uh, the components of outer, the outer cell membranes of gram-negative bacteria that are released in circulation when the bacteria die. And endotoxins are associated with inflammation and chronic disease risk. Endotoxins come from unfriendly bacteria in the gut or directly from foods. Diets that are high in saturated fat, animal products, or refined carbohydrates induce endotoxemia more markedly than fiber-rich plant-based diets. And fiber actually helps to reduce the uptake of endotoxins as well. Uh, environmental contaminants, here we're talking um, uh, about things that, uh, that increase oxidative stress, fuel inflammation, disrupt hormones, damage vital organs, including beta cells, and damage DNA and the central nervous system. Environmental contaminants include pesticides from conventional produce, heavy metals like mercury from fish and seafood, arsenic from rice, chicken, fish, and seaweed, 
And persistent organic pollutants or POPs like PCBs, DDT, and dioxins, mainly from animal products, these are contaminants that move, move up the food chain. So they're found mostly in fish, meat, and dairy products. Solutions here, very simple. Choose organic foods more often, as often as possible. Uh, eat lower on the food chain. Uh, and vary your grains. A lot of people use rice as a staple. The more you can vary your grains, the lower your intake of, of arsenic will be. And inorganic arsenic may actually increase the risk of both uh, di type 2 diabetes and cardiovascular disease. Now, if you're not sure about your rice, one thing that you can do to reduce the arsenic in rice is to boil your rice for five minutes, get rid of the water, and then cook it as usual. Uh, and, and the reason for cooking it in water for just five minutes and then cooking it as usual is that if you cook it in the large amount of water for the entire 45 minutes or however long you're cooking it, you get rid of quite a lot of nutrients. So by cooking it in the large amount of water for just five minutes, you preserve more nutrients and then you just cook it in the two uh, parts water to one part rice. Uh, high temperature, uh, products of high temperature cooking, we're talking about things like heterocyclic amines, polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons, acrylamide, and advanced glycation end products. And uh, there was a 2023 study that reported that high temperature cooking can damage the DNA of food. And when this damaged DNA is absorbed, it may negatively impact the DNA of the consumer. And the damage appears most pronounced in meat as it's it has a high DNA content compared to plants. I thought that was kind of an interesting study. But the most concentrated sources of these, these potentially carcinogenic and potentially damaging compounds uh, are, first of all, for heterocyclic amines. Heterocyclic amines are formed only in animal products, meat and, 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 and eggs primarily. And, and usually when they're cooked at high temperature, grilled or, or oh, sorry, I didn't mean to do that. Uh, grilled or fried, um, um, they, the, the food needs to contain carnitine or, or uh, choline, uh, it, it needs to contain creatine or carnitine to produce heterocyclic amines. Uh, polycyclic or aromatic hydrocarbons are formed in anything that's blackened, so whether it's a plant or an animal product. So we want to try to reduce the blackening of foods. Uh, acrylamide is formed in, in um, a number of foods, but mainly starchy foods and, and the, the probably mo most concentrated sources are potato products because they're high in the amino acid asparagine and asparagine is needed for the formation of acrylamide. So fried potato products are really problematic. Advanced glycation end products or ages are, are formed uh, uh, mo most concentrated in processed meat, especially if it's cooked at high temperatures. And, and so these are, these are things we want to avoid. Solutions here, avoid charred or blackened foods, especially meat, poultry, or fish. Avoid uh, fried foods, especially deep fried foods. And use more moist cooking methods, uh, like steaming, stewing, boiling water, sauteing. They produce fewer products of oxidation.